It is not that all of us do not know what right thing and not wrong thing is. We all are fully aware of it. But somehow, somewhere, this peer pressure, ego, my way of thinking prevails and somehow it creates a lot of disturbance. People blame the youth that youth is not listening. But it's not really, really true. It's not the only youth, but also you try to reason with your parents who are older, right? Would they listen to you? Very rare. Very rare. So in order for us to come on the same platform, same dimension, I had to resonate, I had to speak out from my heart, from the bottom most part of my heart, deepest corner of my heart. And when the listener is also listening from the deepest level of their being, then there can be a bridge we can build, we can come on a common platform. But my depth and your depth, or your depth and your father's depth, or your mother's depth, they are not same. So there will always be what we call differential, differential in opinion, and which we have to respect that. We have to respect it with all of our mind. Don't oppose it. Problem comes when you say, no, I will not listen. Tell them, dad or mommy, I do agree with you. Let me think over it. Instead of rebelling and fighting it out and say, oh, no, you are so wrong. <laughs> then there are problems, I think, because believe you me, there is nobody who is more interested in your life than your own parents. But somehow, we take panga with them. <laughs> we, we think we have a living enemy in our midst. This is not the case, you see. You will realize it when you yourself will become parents. You can, let us see, if you want to judge your action, fast forward your life and so you, you think that you are yourself a grandmother or a grandfather. Okay, having done that, wearing a cap of a grandfather or a grandmother, you put yourself in front of you. Now you are a grandfather and now you are a youth also and have a dialogue with yourself. Would you like that? Or have your granddaughter or a grandson talk with you the way you are talking now with your parents or grandparents? Would that be okay? Would you as grandma or grandpa like what you are doing? Okay. Then you can say, okay, my action or my thoughts or my ideas are justifiable or not. It is not that all of us do not know what right thing and not wrong thing is. We all are fully aware of it. But somehow, somewhere, this peer pressure, Ego, my way of thinking prevails and somehow it creates a lot of disturbance. But when we pause for a moment and meditate and see how I would think when I turn 80, then that will give you some idea of your thoughts and the direction in which you are proceeding. See. Youth is, I think it's, we are neither there nor here. We are learning from our experiences. World would change immediately if we were born to learn from others' experiences. For example, if you can learn from others' mistakes, it would be great. But no, I have to make my own mistakes. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that also. But, you know, there are three types of individuals. 
or maybe more types. But this three stands out a lot. One, who after making mistakes doesn't even realize that he has made a mistake. And even if someone tells him, look, you fool, you are making this mistake, you're going in a wrong direction. But you keep going and going and going and so, until you hit the tragedy. And it's not that you don't know. Inside, everyone knows that I am making this mistake. For example, drugs, smoking, any sort of addiction. Everyone knows that this is not right, but you are helpless. Helpless to quit it. Because that dopamine rush, it's so pleasant, you can't do without it. Say. Second category of individual who understands after making mistakes that yes, I made a mistake, is quite honest. And at evening time before finally retiring to bed, if you can make this resolution that yes, I made this mistake, but I will not repeat this again. There are also, there are two categories, no? One who makes mistakes and doesn't make any resolution. One who makes mistakes and also makes a resolution now that enough, I will not repeat this again. So there is some sort of transformation happening afterwards, see. Or another category can also come in, the, oh God, sorry I made this mistake. I cannot promise you that I will not do this again. But I need your help. This will be a very honest thing to say, right? Or you're reading a magazine. While reading a magazine, sometimes we, you know, the photo on the article, it's so attractive, or the, arti the, the, the topic or the title of the article becomes so attractive. Oh, wow, I got to read this one. And after you read one paragraph, you realize it's not going anywhere. The title is attractive, but let me drop this. You see, we all understand this. We face this every single day. Moment we realize this is not right, we drop it. Right? Another category of person, even before committing to any act, even before, mentally, when you meditate over what you are going to do next, you'll get the answer. Or you don't have to waste half an hour reading a whole article and make nothing out of it. So you save actually a lot of time. Even the mundane thing of eating or what to cook next or what to watch next. If you give yourself a pause and there's some sort of a <coughs> wakeful thought, awareful attitude towards yourself. Should I do this? Should I do? And follow your heart. So you'll save a lot of time, I'm telling you. You'll save and not only save time, but you'll end up doing something better. You will choose something worthwhile. So pausing before you act is a great thing.